Welcome back. You are now watching the lifestyle segment of the weekend show brought to you by Holo Crunch. Crunchy, goodness. <laughs> I was thinking about the popcorn. And exactly. Like, how yummy it is. It's the weekend. <laughs> it is the weekend. Um, on this segment, we'll be talking about DNA and infidelity in relationships. So DNA paternity test is nearly 100% accurate at determining whether a man is another person's biological father. Um, DNA tests can use cheek swabs or blood tests. You must have the test done in a medical setting if you need results for legal reasons. Prenatal paternity tests can determine fatherhood during pregnancy and um, you know these are the issues that we'll be discussing today. Um, in Nigeria, statistics out there according to the Vanguard newspaper relays that 30% of fathers are not are allegedly not the fathers of their babies meaning three out of ten children are not fathered by men uh, that they have been said to have biological ties with so we'll be discussing this and more controversial issues today on the lifestyle segment of the program but before we delve into the topic and introduce our guest Andy this has been a trending issue due to the whole <laughs> scandal that made the news during the yes. holidays um, what's your take on all of this so the thought that, so if we're 10 in the studio, so three people out of the 10 may be calling the wrong person the father. <laughs> um, but that's, uh, that's on the light and note. Okay. Um, so let me wear my sociologist hat here. There's a lot of societal pressure on people. So you finish school or you get to a certain age and it's get married, get married, get married. Then you get married, get a child, get a child. Then you get a child, then maybe it's a girl. They say, you need to have a boy, you need to have a boy. And so there these pressures on people are ready to ensure that like you're not complete until you've achieved certain things, especially in a family context. Mm. And so some people, there's a huge percentage of men, first of all, who suffer from infertility and erectile dysfunction, and they never admit it. Mm. Some people even know that they're unable to have children, but they'll never admit it to the woman. And so, um, Ideally, in most cases, the blame just goes to the woman in the first case. Now, is infidelity wrong in relationships? Totally. But it pushes people to a point where, since you are blaming me for not being <laughs> able to give you a child, some people now step out and then go get children elsewhere and bring it and say, you know, it's, it's ours. Um, and so this, and I'm speaking from a Nigerian context, so the societal pressure on people um, leads them into taking some of these wrong decisions. Is it right? No, it's not. But it's, it's important we're having these conversations mm. at this point. Um, but this now brings us to a point where I feel we shouldn't see the, the tests as such a bad thing. Mm. With the same controversy, I've seen people frown at the thought that a man can ask for a DNA test. Mm -hmm. If people are getting married, you get blood tests, you get to know your genotype, you get to know how um, certain medical mm -hmm. and fitness conditions. If you're about to have a child, you might as well do the prenatal DNA test mm -hmm. just to be sure. And at some point, if three out of 10, maybe it should be legalized. Honestly, like point. if those numbers are anything to go by, that is 30%. Three out of ten. That's, That's huge. Crazy. That is crazy. And um, you know, I had the same conversation, this debate with uh, my family during the holidays, and we're talking do have about a lot of we debates, do have don't a lot you? of debates. We <laughs> gather and just talk about anything and everything. And we were saying that how would you feel as a woman if your husband came to you and said, "I wanted to run a DNA test on our child," like? Can you imagine the position that puts you in? And I said, look, if he has any, you know, atom of suspect or, you know, a need to warrant uh, or warrant to um, ask that kind of question, then why not? Yeah. You know, it's to, you know, um, help his conscience and, you know, yours as well. So I didn't see anything wrong with it, but the women in the house were screaming, <laughs> hell no. <laughs> what an insult, you know. So it, it plays both ways. But with statistics as high as this, I think that if you have any need to suspect anything or any, you know, doubt in your mind, then you should go for it. But then again, how affordable is it? Because when we're doing research for the lifestyle segment of today's program, I saw one of the most 
um, research things on Google is um, how much, what's the price to run a DNA yeah. test. So I don't even think it's just this, you know, scandal that came out recently that um, warranted such conversation. A lot of people are interested in this and they want to know how much it would cost them because we know that in Nigeria, um, the minimum wage is 30,000 Naira. True. So someone who's earning 30,000 Naira a month, how are you going to be able to afford such? And so just, ju just for clarity, I hear that it ranges from about um, 150 to 500,000 Naira for that test. Wow. Um, so that, that, that's, that, that's a mm. big issue. But let's remove the word suspicion from the mix. Mm. It's you're going to have a best certificate. So it's like if parents saying, it's my child, why do I need the best certificate? If we remove the suspicion bit from the mm. equation and just see it as a medical procedure where you have a child, they're getting the blood group, the genotype and all, you might as well just have that so that, so that it doesn't, um, you don't wait f for like 10, 20 years. Mm. Um, and so people are like, why do you have to wait this long before you find out? Mm. But there's another side to this conversation. So you have a child, right? And they say poverty is the problem <laughs> with this. You have a child and he becomes a great footballer like Cristiano Ronaldo. Will any father come and say, I want to be sure if this child exactly. is mine? <laughs> it's only when things are going wrong, they'll be like, mm, When they're are paying you? school fees. Like, like, like <laughs> see, see African parents. When uh -huh. the child does something wrong, the father is like, see your child. Mm -hmm. See your child. But and when, when the child is doing like, something oh, good. My, that's my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> that's my son. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we want to hear from you. Um, join the conversation. Call us on 080-537-89021. That's 080-537-89021. Have you experienced paternity fraud? Um, do you know someone who has? Share your thoughts, share your questions, share your stories with us. We want to hear from you. And we want to be able to prefer some solutions that may be helpful. So I completely agree with you, Andy. <laughs> like, you know, and I think it's a very, you mentioned something about culture at the beginning yeah. of this conversation. I think that plays a very integral role in our alleged high statistics of paternity fraud. Um, you know, the pressure on women to get married, the pressure on men to start having children immediately they get married, you know. So I think even um, you hear stories that, you know, the, the husband is encouraging the, w the wife, even when he knows, when he, knows he has some um, fertility issues, to yeah. go out there and, you know, uh, get pregnant. But when it comes out, finally, he denies her. You yeah. know, that, oh, I had no <laughs> idea. I didn't know anything about this so um it's definitely it's definitely um you know the pressure the culture mm. is des definitely has something to do with um i think that um, alleged high number but i uh, hear we have a caller let's hear from them your name and where are you calling from please my name is godwin okay what's your contribution to the conversation good morning yeah i i love the program i love what you're doing very very well i've been following you for seven now, when we talk about this DNA test of issue, I have a friend who has the same issue. And for the problem is that the girl is rich. I'm so sorry, do you mind? Doing. Sorry, do you mind turning down your television set? We're hearing a feedback okay. from your mom. Uh, I have a friend who has the same issue. Okay. But the problem is that the girl he has the same issue with is so rich, but he can't pull out from that, even though he knows that the two children are not his. So what, how do we do in this kind, what do we do in this kind of situation? Thank you so much for your I want to I want you put to throw more light on please. Okay. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So so it, it, it almost sounds like a scene out of a Jerry Springer um, show. Now the truth is, so in some cultures in Nigeria here, the parents of the man encourage the man to impregnate the woman before marriage, mm. just to be sure that she can even have kids. Mm. We need to realize that some people can't have kids and some people don't want to have kids. I've spoken to a couple of young ladies um, in recent time who have said they don't think they want the idea of having kids because um, the mortality rate is constantly high. A lot of women die and have complications as a result of childbirth. And then there's postpartum depression and the likes. We need to understand that it's okay to adopt a child. And so like in this person's situation, you, you meet some children and you just love them. You can literally raise someone else's child. So if you remove the ego and the cultural ties, if you personally don't have a problem with it, because for the person to state that, well, this person is rich and so they can't pull out, mm. it means that 
<laughs> the person's <laughs> white is already stained. Like you're not ex uh, you're not totally perfect, which means you're already there for a condition. Mm. And so sadly, compromise now has to come in. Mm -hmm. If you know this is the situation, you could adopt the child. Mm. If both of you are in agreement, then it's not a problem. Um, the good part is, at least in this case, they already know. And so when we look at the fact that adoption is not evil, it's not a bad thing, a child doesn't have to be born by you for you to accept the child as yours, then that stigma would leave the picture. Some people will be able to adopt children and then you have situations like this because there's also the psychological effect it has on the kids. So you grow up with a father and mom and at eight years old, they say, you know what, daddy is not your daddy. And so we don't know how it's going to be. Mm. The, how, what does the child do? Where do they stand in this situation? And so we need to understand the mental health issues that happen as a result of the paternity fraud, the infidelity, and most importantly for me, what happens to the child. So we mm. should welcome adoption. Most definitely. I hear we have another caller. Your name and where are you calling from, please? Good morning. What's your name? Okay, seems we lost that caller. Um, we'll try and try and call back again and we'll try to add you to the conversation. Yes, you were saying. Yeah, so, um, so adoption. Mm -hmm. So that's the cool and the nice side of it. So let's go to the confront our part. Mm. There are legal resources and remedies to things like this. I know in the UK there was a case, one of the most controversial cases where they had where someone sued for paternity fraud, mm. um, got a ruling of about £72,000 and at some point it got appealed because they were able to prove that she had no malicious intent and it seems the man knew about it um, mm. and he had issues mm. and so the woman won the case. Mm. So there are so legal remedies. I think, I think our caller has rejoined. Your name and where are you calling from? Your name is what? Okay, Davis, do you mind turning down the volume of your television set, please, so we can hear you clearly? Thank you very much. All right, go ahead. What's your contribution to the conversation? I'm sure I'm following your program, and what you are doing is very, very nice. That's very hard to think. I used to do that. Um, you know, in Africa, I just like the order of what my brother is saying over there. Um, your mother would like you to have, for you to have your own particular child, and your father too would like you to have your own particular child. This is uh, the adoption aspect, not in the part of us, the African. So um, that is why it's been difficult for the adoption game in Nigeria, but if it's the outside world, being the um, American, US, Canada, so, so that one can be done. But here in Africa, it's, um, so it's been very, 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 very difficult and has been a Never been a left. If we can see a stand on our hands, even though after having children, we still want to see to help. We can see adults who see to help them to train they try to become better person in the So that's how it came to be. But we're still praying, we're still praying for, for our country to, to the eyes to open more, to see the adoption aspects, so then to still be to be of help. Thank you so much for your contribution to the conversation. Yeah, I mean, you brought that up. I totally agree. I think we now need to sort of reshape and reorient ourselves and our mentality that adoption is okay. Um, you know, even the stigma with IVF. So you can yeah. imagine what the stigma with adoption is. And it's expensive is. and painful yes. and all of that. Yeah. And even people who have children through IVF, you hear Nigerians are so quick to say, ah, they couldn't have a child for 10 years, they had to do IVF. Mm -hmm. They have a child exactly. now. Can you let it be? Exactly. And even C-sections. <laughs> yes. Like, I mean, why is why? it even a conversation? Exactly. Exactly. But yeah. think about it. Growing mm. up, um, and maybe this is from a privileged point of view, um, almost every f Nigerian family grew up with one relative who they brought from another family who mm. couldn't really sustain. Mm. And the child grew up with you people as almost yes, like yours. your as yeah. yours. Mm -hmm. And we were okay with that. So mm. why can't we welcome adoption? But I think we have another call. Okay. Hello. 
Okay, I think we may have lost that call. We may have lost that call. All right, let's take a short break. When we return, we will have some guests to discuss this and a little more. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back on The Weekend Show. Welcome back. You're still watching the lifestyle segment of the weekend show. We're discussing DNA, paternity fraud, infidelity in Nigeria. Joining us, we have our guest finally. His name is Wale Jenna, um, CEO of Sophia Group. Welcome thank back to the weekend you, show, Wale. Thank you, thank you. Happy New Year. So, have you had any experience uh, with either paternity fraud, DNA issues, and what has that been so far? Yeah, I actually had a friend mm. who did not know that he's, uh, you know, he didn't know, he thought his father was, he didn't know who his father was mm. until, you know, until years later, mm. you know, and that was like after university, mm. you know, and that was, that was just um, devastating for him, you know, so uh, it's a whole mental divide how to just, cope to this with this new person that just showed up in your life mm. you know and uh you know the guy was devastated so he grew up thinking someone yeah. was his father yeah. then they ran a dna exactly and he found out that, it, that was i think it was wasn't even a dna initially it was just um his mom just calling him up and saying that see i have something you need to know and, and that was it wow which, which brings a question to mind so in some cases it's not even that the parents are being fraudulent. It's just that they don't know how to let the children know that this is the situation. So it's a, t a case where it may have been a single mother and the father ran away because yeah. that does happen. Yeah. And so a new person comes into the yeah. life and you grow up thinking this person is the father. At what point should the parents, the, the, the mother, come out and tell the child that, listen, this is not your dad, but you can call him your mm -hmm. dad. Like, at what age is, is it right? Because you said this was after university. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you tell them at 10, they're devastated. At 15, they are. After so at what age do you think um, people should be open about things like this? And should we even be forced to call someone daddy just to save face? Like, mm. Yeah, that's, and that's a very good one. You see, I, I strongly believe that from the moment a child is conscious enough, like probably teenage years, it reduces the stigma. There's another person that I know now, another thing that happens is um, probably a woman gives birth when she's young, like in secondary school or something. Then they adopt the child as the last born of the family, mm. right? Mm. And then, so this other experience that I had is a friend. So somebody was insulting her and said to her, like, mm. you're not even the last born of the family, don't let them lie to you. Yeah, they don't know who your daddy is. <laughs> you know those kind of things. Yeah. You know, so you know, and she, at, according to her, she cried her her eyes out. She had to go and ask everybody, and they initially had to tell her that this is what mm. it is. Mm. You know, so I strongly believe that from the moment a child is a teenager, you know, where it won't be too much of a shock because they can process, but they can't process too much at that age. Yeah. I think it's so very important to give them that identity. You know, the identity crisis, I think it does a lot of damage mm. because they begin to question every other thing in their lives. Their self-esteem is just shot to, to six feet below. You know, it's, 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 it, it could be really devastating. Mm. How would you suggest the issue of this DNA paternity fraud should be dealt with? Because it's a wide spectrum of issues, mm. right? So you gave the example of your yeah. friend who was, you know, brought up as a mm. sibling, then the other one who was brought up yeah. with a different father. But there are very many issues yeah. of fathers actually raising children that do not belong to them. Absolutely. So a lot of them are itching to run a DNA test, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. they do not want to... Um, jeopardize the relationship with their spouses. So what are some ways that you could suggest they can go about it without putting their relationship on the line? I, I think um, there are no, in the world of today, yeah, I, I think um, it's just like um, very people tell you, see, don't get married without a prenup. Oh, you're breaking my heart. You don't trust me, blah, 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 this and that and that. But it is, it is what it is. I think the same way in the world of today, if you suspect or you know you know how you guys met probably both of you you're on the streets <laughs> <laughs> you know you know that too. <laughs> you know both of us we know we know what the game is you get so I, I i feel like it shouldn't be it shouldn't be something that people are really really pained about i think just go ahead if you have any doubts right mm. just go ahead and, and clear the doubts 
you know, well, that's, that's a man, yeah. you are married, yeah. you find out after 10 years of marriage that your seven-year-old child yeah. isn't yours, will you go to court? No, oh, that's my child, forget me, forget, that's my, you know, I, and for me, like, if I grow up feeling that this child is mine, regardless of DNA or whatever, that's my child. I've been raising a child, right? We formed this bond and something. I'm that emotional, you get. Nobody's going to take that child away from me. Forget it. <laughs> Forget it. You know, we, we can lock it in court for the next 50, 100 years, but that's my child. Mm -hmm. You know, because that's emotional. And I think fatherhood goes beyond, um, oh, the blood or DNA, all of those kind of things. There are lots of people raising children that they i mean from day one it's not even probably you even adopted the child or something i know that this is not yours mm -hmm. right and you form this bond and that's it you know so um but we just and i think at the same time it's it's um it's just an ego thing on the side of men right i mean there, there are so many crazy cases for instance my baba right my baba was telling me a story he met his girlfriend when she was pregnant for another guy <laughs> Can you imagine that? She was pregnant for another guy. The guy didn't want her. So um, eventually, they get, I, I think probably the pregnancy went bad or something. But he was the guy there not trying another man's pregnancy that was not available, right? So when that one went away, they now eventually had a proper relationship and she got pregnant again and had his own child. Mm. You know, so there are lots of crazy, not like crazy, yeah, crazy things that happen. Way more than, oh, I discovered it's not my child. And I think for men, it's just an ego thing. Mm. It's just this, like, seriously. I think that's just, that's, that's how it is for men. Mm. But on, in order, if you look at it on a broader platform, there are lots of men that raise children that they know that are not theirs. Mm. And there's no issue to it. Mm. The phone lines are so open. Uh, join the conversation. We're reeling in in a bit, so maybe we could take two more calls. The number to call is 080-537-89021. That's 080-537-89021. I was going to ask you, Ali, yeah. where do we draw the line between ethical and legal when it comes to issues like this? Mm. When does it just become against the law? It's mm. illegal for you to actually carry out an activity like this versus it's unethical, like the society frowns against it. Mm. Um, for me, I think um, ethics is more of, I mean, the right thing that should be done. Legal is when, okay, this is what should be done. But I think when people get legal, yeah, it means that they've tried to, you know, condone. Let's, let's see how we can work it out, and then it's not working. Then so, is there, is there a scenario that breaches any legal, any laws, any, mm. you know, constitutional laws in cases of paternity fraud and this yeah. DNA scams that come to mind? Okay. Sorry, hold that thought, and let's hear from this caller, Mr. Mike from from Dawiki. Okay, <laughs> what's your contribution to the conversation? Hello. Bauchi, Bauchi. Okay, Mr. Mike from Bauchi. Yes, my major problem is Nigeria for now, particularly African people. It's the issue that we've forgotten our norms and cultures. As a great child in my village, in those days, we have people who cannot even give birth. So what they do is that they are to have enough children and give them one or two to take care of them. So this means when we go to the Western world, and we are talking about DNA, if one can go publicly to look for a child or steal a child and cut that child in soul, why are we being the issue of infertility and... Uh, Are you still there? So we should not be discussing but later and the child because child is a gift from God. In most cases, some ladies get pregnant even before they get married. They don't even know who is the father of the child. So if that child is born under your roof, it's your responsibility to take care of that child. So please let us above all these Western world ideas. 95 to 98 percent of the DNA, they are fake. <laughs> they are not correct. So please, 
Those who are known and cultured, if you marry and you cannot give you a child or you cannot pregnant your wife, adopt a child or let your relatives give you one or two child and you take care of them. And you stand you tall in the society. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Mr. you Mike. so much for your that's, contribution. That's an interesting angle yeah. because there's that Western influence which mm. is even making us have this conversation because um, yeah. in African culture there are times where someone could lose, the, a woman could lose the husband and they yeah. take care of you, get married to the brother the of brother. your late husband. Mm -hmm. I was on this new app called Clubhouse last week and yeah. someone was saying his uncle, um, the wife died and or something happened and so he, the, the, the brother died and so he went and took the man's wife and the brother already had a child with the woman mm. and he married her and they also have other kids mm. and in their culture it was fine it was both families that even agreed that say come this is your wife now take mm. care of her because you need to take care of your yeah. brothers uh, whatever so it's interesting that mr mike brought that cultural mm. angle so maybe we are seeing it in reverse mm. yeah. so maybe this wasn't frowned at in africa it as much anything. as we are doing now but i think we have the final call on the line um Please turn down the volume of your TV set. Um, your name and where you're calling from. Hello? Hello? Okay, while we wait um, for that call to come through, what do you think about the cultural angle which Mr. Mike just brought up? What he brought up, <laughs> yes. So for since time immemorial, that's the culture. That has been the norm. Yeah. The fact that it's a society that raises a child. It's True. not just the mm -hmm. parents alone. Yeah. So whether you are able to conceive naturally, your husband has, you know, is able to mm -hmm. impregnate you or whatever, you are raising a child as a community. Mm -hmm. You can adopt, you can, you know, um, take care of your, your siblings' children and all of that. But one thing you just said, the marriage to, God forbid, like <laughs> your spouse yeah. dies and they marry marry you off to, mm. I'm sorry. Mm. <laughs> um, how do the children call themselves? Exactly. And like, uh, yeah. So <laughs> where, where does the, how does, that, that infringes on the woman's right if it's not her choice to yeah, do that, true, right? Yeah, because most people use culture to yeah, justify, justify that, that and tell you that you are now property, you've been property yeah, of the family yeah, because you married yeah. into, mm -hmm. so I don't subscribe to that. I believe that a woman is in full control and full right of her body Absolutely. and what she does with it. So Absolutely. don't tell me because of culture, mm -hmm. then they'll all of ship us, you over they'll like ship you over. They just, oh, we've paid your bride price, yeah. so now you belong to mm. the brother. So I don't subscribe to that. However, um, I subscribe to the community upbringing yeah. of them being able to say, okay, um, you know, if it's your choice, you are now able to, um, you know, remain within the family and to raise your children the way that you want. Mm. So um, culture does play a very significant it role does. in yeah. this entire conversation. I really did uh, um, appreciate the contribution yeah. of Mr. Mike from Bauchi. Uh, we still have a caller on the line. Um, I can't hear you, though. He's gone off. Okay, so sorry about that. So, Wale, your final thoughts on uh, the topic of today? Um, for me... I just, um, I strongly believe that if you have any doubts, mm. it's important to clear your doubts, you mm. know. And, um, and I think it's a discussion, but I think what causes the friction about this DNA thing is because men are really sneaky about it. They're looking to take the toothbrush, you know, mm. move the hair, <laughs> you know, all those kind of, you yeah. know. So I think um, if, if you have any doubts, you know, sit down with your spouse and discuss it. Um, I think I want to do a DNA test, you know, she may be heartbroken, oh, you don't trust me, this and that, mm. but, you know, go ahead. <laughs> Most men that come back with DNA test results, they, they, they did some O7 to get, mm. you know, that result, mm. you know, and, and, uh, and many times when they have doubts like that, they are mostly disappointed, mm. you know, they may have actually had those thoughts for a long time, one or two things, they just feel does not add up, but... Mm. Eventually. So for those watching quickly who are, are saying, okay, yeah. Wale, I want to do this, but I just need you to tell me exactly how to do it, the context in which, and Andy, I want you to answer this question <laughs> as well, the context in which to do it, how to say it without hurting my partner's right. feelings. Because this is a very sensitive issue. Absolutely. Someone you've carried, a, you, a woman you've carried a child for nine months, yeah. and then the father is coming and saying, I want to make sure. Yeah. Do you understand? So it, it, it is a bit hurtful. Absolutely. So but how can they do it in the most sensitive way um, possible because we know it has to be done if yeah. you have that doubt. Yeah, so any man that wakes up one morning and says, I want to do a DNA, DNA test has had maybe an experience or something, you know, with this particular woman mm. that doesn't put his mind at rest, right? 
either he's thinking, oh, um, I got, we got married because there was a baby involved, or, you know, there was just something. And so I think it's important to just sit down and trash out those issues mm -hmm. you get. If she has his word that, see, this is your baby, you know, and it feels like, no, it's not, then, you know, but I, I, don't, I don't think that it should lead to a lot of fights or something. I mean, through our relationship, think about it. There, there have been times when you don't trust your partner. Mm -hmm. Where are you coming from? Um, who just called you? So the mm -hmm. trust issue is, is always in relationships, right? Mm -hmm. So if this is one of the things that you feel like, okay, and at, at those times, you people moved out in that relationship because you cleared whatever that issue was. Where were you at so, so, so time when I was at this place? Mm -hmm. you, and it checked out. So your, your trust returns. So the same way you feel like, Babe, the time you said you got pregnant, we had not had any <laughs> sex in like seven months, and this baby just came. So, so clear it. Yeah. You know? Um, three things. One, I feel we must highlight the fact that it's fraudulent to bring someone else's child and tell Absolutely. another man that this is his child. That said, um, if you can afford a DNA test, you should, that means you're able to afford therapy. And so couples should. Um, be more open to couple um, counseling, married counseling and therapy first. So if you have those suspicions and you can't really have that conversation, you can go meet a therapist and say, this is what I feel and have them advise you on how to have this conversation. In some cases, you'll find, like you said, it's ego, that maybe that's not even the crux of the problem. Mm -hmm. And so because of the distrust it brings when it's a false accusation, in most cases, the marriages don't even survive. And so people um, should be more open to marriage um, and couples counseling and therapy. And then the final point, as a society, we should be more open to um, adoption and knowing that some people, the same way you have the right to your body, some people just don't want to have kids and don't think they can go through that process. And so we should give people the benefit of doubt and be open to have these conversations. And um, it, should be the last, it should be the last case scenario. Mm -hmm. Try therapy before you just jump into it. And if you go fraudulently to acquire DNA, um, that's, that tells a lot about you as a person as well so everybody should just be responsible and <laughs> behave well behave like a human being all right wale thank you so much my for your pleasure, time thank you so pleasure. much for your contribution the conversation never ends on your television screen it continues on our social media handles at weekend show ng on twitter facebook and instagram uh we'll take a short break right now when we return more on the weekend show don't go anywhere North to South Africa. <laughs> East to West Africa. TOS TV Network is your digital first Pan-African news network, bringing you news from across the continent. Visit our website www.tostvnetwork.com and follow us on social media at TOS TV Network on Instagram, Facebook and